Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In my first video, we discussed the food and equipment you'll need before getting your Greyhound puppy. In this video, we're gonna discuss crate training and show how to tie them out, not only physically, but mentally as well, using some cool treat dispensers, as well as some helpful training tips in general. Then we're gonna go into how to improve the communication between you and your Greyhound. They are a very silent breed. They're gonna give you subtle clues that they have to go outside. So we're gonna utilize a bell so they can alert you that they have to go outside. I'm excited to show you and let's get right into this. All right, so we're just gonna go right into how to train your dog to use the bell so they can communicate with you better that they have to use the bathroom. So. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're just gonna pick up one of these bells at anywhere you get your pet supplies. Uh, you know, Chewy, Pet Flow, Pet Smart, anywhere. So you're gonna to wanna to hang this up in a spot where you're gonna be able to hear it. So before you go outside, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the bell with your hand. You're gonna hit that bell. The second you hit it, start making your way outside and you're gonna be amazed at how quickly your dog is gonna pick up on that this bell means it's time to go outside. So uh, it took Zelda here one time for her to figure out that if she hits this bell, she gets to go outside. And uh, thankfully she doesn't abuse that power, but that's all you gotta do. Hang it up on a doorknob in a spot you're gonna be able to hear it and just hit it once, start making your way outside. Your dog is gonna pick up on that bell. That means go outside as Simple as that, it's really not any more difficult than that. I've seen videos online where uh, you have to go through this whole process to, to train them with treats and all this. They don't even need that. Going outside is a uh, treat enough for them. So all you gotta do, hang it up, hit the bell, go outside. Your dog is gonna start hitting that with, with his or her nose and, um, and that's it. You're, you're gonna improve the communication. Like I said, these dogs, uh, they're very subtle with how they're gonna tell you they have to go outside. It might be that they're silently standing in a corner or, or where the front door is. Uh, but this, this will allow you to hear that they have to go outside. Maybe you're in another room. You're going to hear that bell. And that's as simple as that. So just uh, get that f***ing bell. All right, so one tip I have for you guys, when you're training your Greyhound, uh, they respond to positive reinforcement uh, the best. So you're gonna wanna get one of these, these fanny packs that can hold treats. And uh, as you can see here, got some treats in here. So anytime they're behaving the way that, uh, that you like, you know, if they're, if they're calm, if they're, you know, not, uh, rambunctious, whatever it is, whatever whatever behavior you want to reinforce, just give them a treat, let them know that they're doing the right thing. Definitely pick up one of these fanny packs and uh, it's gonna make training a lot easier. Here I'm gonna show you how to, how to train your dog to do paw. First, you're, what you're gonna wanna do is let them know you have treats. So let them smell that, let them smell it, and I'll put it back in. So now they're gonna to try to figure out how to get that treat. So what we're gonna do here is uh, Zelda, sit. Honey, sit. Honey, sit. Sit. Come here, sweetie. Come here. Sit. Sit. So again, let, let them know that you have treats. So whenever they do the, uh, the activity that you want them to do, if they do it correctly, make sure you give them a treat. So even if uh, you know, you're trying to teach them paw, they don't know what that means. So even if they have the slightest movement of their paw, give them a treat. If, if they're gonna start figuring out that for whatever reason, when you say this word and they start doing this action, uh, they're gonna figure out that that gives them treat and they're gonna associate it. So um, it, you're gonna wanna say paw every time. They're gonna start understanding what paw means. It means to lift up their paw like this. So, um, so here, paw. See, that's, that's, uh, 
that's weeks and weeks of training right there. So paw, and she knows which, which paw to paw. So what I do is I tap, I tap which leg I want them to move. And then she will, <laughs> and then she'll do this. But, um, so that's, that's basically it. You're going to want to just have, have a, a fanny pack of treats, which it's just convenient. That's why I use this. Uh, you don't want to just have a handful of treats at all times. You can just put it in here. You can uh, be hands-free. So that's all you're going to want to do. You're going to want to uh, repeat your command. Let's say this is the floor. Their paw goes like this. Give them a treat. A and just praise them. Say, good girl, good boy. Give them, give them a bunch of treats. That is just the best way to do it. You know, it it's all about positive reinforcement with Greyhounds. And uh, again, just give them a, a give them a treat once they even do the slightest bit of of what you want to do you know when when i use uh when i put the harness on my dog i have already taught her paw so when it came time to incorporate it like you have to give me your your paws when we're gonna go out and use the harness uh i just told her paw paw and she finally she started getting in the groove and now every single time we go out I, I just, I take the harness and she just does it. I'm gonna have to say anything. With this method, you're gonna be able to teach them to do whatever you want. So just always keep that in mind. They do the slightest right movement that you're looking for. Praise them, give them treats. And you know, she doesn't need uh, treats to do these commands anymore. Training with treats, some people don't agree with it, but uh, they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna figure out a lot quicker if, if you give them some positive reinforcement. <laughs> Okay, so this is one of the toys that I got for Zelda for, uh, you know, just exercising her mentally. So what this is, it's just a wooden board. And as you can see, she uh, she ate a hole through this. So don't leave this uh, with them after you leave the house because this is what's gonna happen. So um, only do this when you're around and make sure they don't start trying to eat through it because they think there's, there's a, a treat in there somewhere. So these little, slidey things i put chicken in these so um you just you slide it open put like a piece of chicken or some sort of a treat in there and just sh then close it so i put that in every single slot so this is just a great way to exercise them mentally and uh it's really fun to see them figure out how to open these things and, and get to the food All right, so this is another cool little uh, little treat dispenser here that you can use. So what you do is each one of these you unscrew, 
and on the inside I don't know if you could see I put treats inside of it so uh, this is just another fun way to to get them to use their brains so uh, you just put treats in there you close it up and then you see them uh, you know try to figure out how to get those treats because they can smell those treats what they're gonna want to do is tip that over and believe it or not they're gonna figure that out so uh, this is just a really cool toy and, and we're gonna we're gonna show this right now Okay, so we're gonna go into crate training. It's uh, it's gonna be, I'm gonna keep it simple for you guys. Uh, before I start though, this is uh, one of the biggest surprises I had when I got Zelda, is that if I would leave the house or if I would go to another room and she didn't know where I was, she would start crying and crying. And I live, you know, in a multifamily home, so my neighbors would hear her crying and howling all day long. You just have to understand that that is gonna be part of it. If you get a greyhound puppy, they are going to get that separation anxiety. They're they're not going to they're going to cry no matter what, no matter how short you're not in the house. If you leave, if you leave the house for one minute, you're gonna you're gonna put your ear to the front door and you're gonna hear them crying uncontrollably. So just keep that in mind. That's going to be part of the process. Don't yell at them for that. It's just it's instinctual for them. So don't. Don't be upset. Don't be shocked when that's when that's the case because it's going to take months and months and months for them to get out of that. Just keep that in mind. And when it comes to crate training, anyway, it's simple, very simple, and I'll keep it simple. If you're leaving the house, you put them in the crate. The crate might be too big, so it comes with a divider that you can put in to, to make the, 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 the space smaller so they can't just go to the other side of the crate and go to the bathroom and then go lay on the other side. If you don't want them sleeping in the bedroom, or I mean in the bed with you, bring, at least bring them into the bedroom with you in the crate and, you know, close the crate, lock it so they're at least, they don't feel abandoned, they're, they're going to be in there with you. But also keep in mind they might still cry because they want to get on the bed with you. That's all part of the process, but you know, I'll walk you through uh, an average morning. Okay, so they're in the crate in the morning. You take them out, you go right outside, they go to the bathroom. 
you you play with them. Good. Good girl. Good girl. Uh, you do some of these fun activities like the treat dispenser. You try to teach them some tricks. Uh, you play with them for a couple of minutes and then before you go to work, make sure you put them in there, you lock it, and uh, and then a couple hours later, you know, take them out for, you know, a lunchtime break and then after work, uh, you got to take them out again. So it's just all about consistency. Um, make sure you feed them in the mornings and then feed them in the evenings. This will help, uh, you know, uh, regulate their bathroom schedule. So you're not just going to the, they're not going to the bathroom like all day long. So that's important. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. I mean, it's, uh, you might think you can trust your Greyhound after a couple of months of uh, crate training, but uh, don't be surprised if, uh, you know, they get into other trouble. Even if they're not going to the bathroom in the house, they still are in the learning process. They're, they're still puppies. You know, they're going to chew up things. They're going to want to go around the house. Little by little, give them some more freedom in the house. Let, let them adventure just a little bit. Don't give them the full house immediately because they're going to get they're going to get into trouble. You know, they're going to chew up shoes. They're going to chew, chew up electrical stuff. So make sure all that stuff is out of their reach. I actually had one instance where uh, I got these shark jaws when I was a kid in Florida. You know, stupid me, I left it out on a shelf. She took it. I actually had a furbo, so I saw it happening and I tried stopping her. But so she took the shark jaws and she was chewing on it like it was just a, another bone. And then she, she lacerated her paw pad and bled all over the house. So these are the type of things you need to look out for. Don't let them get into any trouble. Make sure everything is out of the reach. They're big dogs, so it's gonna take a little bit more effort on, on your part to make sure everything's out of their reach. Um, you know, any valuables, anything that you would, uh, you know, you wouldn't want to get destroyed, make sure it's out of the reach. But again, uh, if you're not in the house, if, if you can't keep an eye on them, you have to put them in the crate. Uh, this consistency and the dedication to the process uh, will will make your greyhound learn a, a lot quicker. Uh, just make sure you're you're consistent. That's the main thing, and uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, get get the large dog crate, like I said, and anytime you can't keep an eye on them, put them in the crate, and just keep them on a consistent schedule for for their bathroom breaks. You know, praise them when they go outside. And uh, you know, it just just make sure that they're they're safe too. Because if you let them uh, get to anything, like I said, with the shark jaws, like um, yeah, they could hurt themselves severely. So make sure that if you can't keep an eye on them, they're locked away in the crate. It's going to take months and months. And uh, you know, you might feel like you can trust them, but uh, that's what happened with Zelda here. She got to shark jaws. Uh, when I was at work and I thought I could trust her. So just make sure that you, you gauge the maturity level and uh, and that's pretty much it. All right, everyone, that pretty much wraps it up for today. Uh, please check back in next week for new content. And of course, do not forget to hit like and subscribe to get more tips and tricks on how to take care of your new Greyhound. And of course, you get to see more of my beautiful companion here. See you next week, guys.